Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm recording this video for the Social Science Program's uh, Analyzing Social Media course to talk about obtaining uh, a YouTube API for research purposes. Now, Christoph Sporlin has created a, a very simple list that only needs a little bit of updating uh, since always there are websites that are changing. But YouTube is part of Google, so in order to get an API key, an uh, application programming interface key, uh, you're going to need to follow the, these steps. First, uh, go to HTTPS, not Facebook, but console.developers.google.com. That's not hard. That's step one of 12. Uh, we're already there. That's going to take us to the Google Cloud. Now, since I've been doing research with YouTube already, you'll see a project uh, here called Social Media Analysis. But um, <laughs> make sure simply that you've clicked on enabled APIs and services, okay? And then what you'll want to do is make sure that you click on create a new project uh, as a link. So we'll get started with that, okay? And then you're gonna wanna name it. Uh, so I'm gonna name this uh, sample YouTube API uh, project. A project is just a way for you to organize uh, uh, codes and keys, which open the door to data. Um, it's noting that my organization is through main.edu, which is where my Google account is associated. Yours may be different, but every University of Maine uh, system student has a main.edu account. Uh, which is connected to Google. Um, and so there we are. Uh, now we want to make sure that we enable APIs and services. So we're going to click on that. And then you're going to want to, when we get there to enable those, uh, you're going to want to search for in this search bar where it says search for APIs and services, YouTube data API v3, which is as of 2023, the current uh, API. And you're gonna wanna click on it. And then you're going to wanna click enable. What could be simpler? You know, we're already seven steps of the way through this 12 step process. Not very hard. Um, then once we're there, uh, you're going to want to look for this button over on the right. It's blue. It says create credentials. And then uh, it's going to ask you, well, what API are you talking about and what do you want to do it uh, with it? So we're going to want to make sure that YouTube data API version 3 is selected because, as you can see, there are many different possibilities. We want to make sure that's selected. Then if you are going in and trying to collect some data for your research project, make sure that it is indicating public data. And now what's going to happen next is uh, after I click next, which is step 11, you're going to see an API key. Now, I'm not going to click next. Why? Because... Um, I don't want to share my API key with you because <laughs> that key is not like a standard key to a door where the key to that door is the same, but you have to imagine that it's as if every person gets their own special door and a special key, which is important because Google, which has prying eyes, is going to know who's going in whose door. If I share with you the API key that I use, then you are going to be able to impersonate me in all kinds of um, applications that through their programming interface with YouTube data. 
Uh, <laughs> you could do things like leave comments in my name, delete videos in my name, um, all kinds of other things that could get me in trouble. So make sure that when you click next um, and you're taken to the next page, where this big long API key is listed, um, by the way, which is a set of letters, numbers, and symbols, um, you know, just dozens of them all in a row. It's a unique um, kind of code uh, for you to get in. It's a key code that you copy it, you save it somewhere secure that nobody else can get to, and that you don't share it with others. Um, and save that key somewhere special. Um, and it's as simple as that. Um, that's the 12 steps. What could be simpler? Not much. Good luck to you in getting access to your own YouTube API key.